when a soldier assigned the duty of safeguarding against wild animals encountered a drowning jaguar. He made a decision to defy his orders and rescue the animal. He never anticipated any reward for his kindness. But what unfolded next was beyond belief. On a scorching day, while patrolling the banks of a river on the verge of being dammed, he heard an eerie and spine-chilling growl that echoed through the trees. His instincts kicked in, and he stealthily moved through the underbrush toward the source of the growl. There, at the water's edge, he witnessed a scene that defied imagination. A powerful jaguar, one of the jungle's most formidable predators, was trapped in the relentless grip of the river's powerful current. The jaguar appeared to be drowning, and despite his orders to eliminate threats and keep protesters and wild animals away from the private land being developed, something inside him compelled him to help the jaguar. He had been entrusted with the responsibility to maintain security in an area where private corporations driven by insatiable greed were encroaching on the heart of the Amazon forest. Triggering protests from environmentalists and indigenous people fighting to protect their sacred land. Ethan, having served in the military in the past, now found himself working for a private security firm tasked with keeping protesters at bay. He fully grasped the significance of preserving the Amazon. But he also needed to provide for his family. With a heavy heart, he continued his patrols, perpetually torn between his duty and his personal convictions. However, in this moment, he couldn't turn his back on nature. Disregarding the risks and the moral dilemmas that swirled in his mind, Ethan swiftly retrieved a rope from his belt and secured it tightly around the trunk of a tall tree a few feet from the river's edge. With a deep breath, he ventured into the turbulent waters, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and determination. He fully understood the grave danger he was in. The jaguar could easily shred him to pieces within seconds. However, he couldn't simply stand by and watch the magnificent creature drown. With every stroke, he inched closer to the struggling predator which oscillated between panicking thrashes and menacing growls how he was going to assist it. He had no clear plan. He only knew that he had to make the attempt. As Ethan approached the drowning jaguar, he could discern the fear in its eyes. He empathized with the animal's terror. For it was ensnared in the merciless currents. And a human was approaching. A symbol of peril in its world. Ironically, Ethan had far more to fear in his endeavor to aid the jaguar. He cautiously extended his hand toward the formidable cat, offering salvation instead of menace. The jaguar's powerful jaws snapped shut perilously close to his outstretched arm. But it didn't attack. Instead, it emitted a guttural, plaintive growl. As if recognizing that Ethan's intentions were rooted in assistance. Summoning every ounce of his strength. Ethan seized the scruff of the jaguar and began the arduous task of swimming toward the riverbank. Tugging at the rope that anchored him to the ground. The struggle was intense. The jaguar's formidable muscles resisted his efforts. And the river's unyielding current threatened to engulf them both. For what seemed like an eternity. He persisted. Locked in a life and death battle against the elements. Finally, with a final surge of determination, Ethan managed to haul the jaguar onto solid ground. The massive cat lay there, gasping for breath beside him, its body trembling from the ordeal, realizing the importance of avoiding any further threats. The soldier scrambled to his feet, ensuring he didn't give the jaguar an opportunity to attack now that they were back on stable land. However, the jaguar didn't respond with anger. Instead, it regarded Ethan with a mix of weariness and curiosity panting heavily. The jaguar struggled to drag itself up the riverbank but lacked the strength to lift even its head. Let alone its entire body, Ethan understood that the battle was far from over. Despite being saved from the perilous grip of the river, the jaguar remained a wild and unpredictable creature 
Taking a step back. Ethan allowed the big cat space to recover and carefully assessed it for injuries. Based on his initial observations. The jaguar had numerous cuts and scrapes. But nothing appeared too severe. Ethan recognized the importance of treating these wounds for them to heal properly. However. He wondered how the jaguar would react this time. Just because it had allowed him to rescue it once didn't guarantee a second approach would be as successful. Nonetheless, Ethan felt compelled in his heart to at least try, slowly, he reached into his backpack and retrieved a first aid kit. It was a risky move. But he couldn't bear to leave the jaguar to suffer. Under the watchful gaze of the big cat, he unrolled some gauze and poured disinfectant over it. Summoning all his courage. He cautiously approached the wild cat again. Keeping his movements slow and steady. Surprisingly. The jaguar neither lunged forward to attack him nor retreated to avoid his outstretched hand. Ethan released a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding and tentatively began wrapping the cat's wounds with the gauze. The jaguar growled when the disinfectant made contact with its scarred skin but refrained from snapping. It was as if it understood that this momentary discomfort would lead to long-term benefits and that the human wasn't attempting to harm it. While tending to the animal's injuries, Ethan spoke soothingly in a soft, gentle tone. Some of the wounds seemed deep and a bit older. Ethan couldn't help but wonder if the big cat had become entangled in some of the barbed wire placed around the private property. Ethan had heard reports of a potential large predator breaking in. And it occurred to him that perhaps he had stumbled upon their cat burglar. A giggle escaped his lips at the thought. But he quickly stifled it. Aware that the jaguar could turn on him at any moment. However. There was something in the jaguar's eyes that conveyed an understanding that Ethan was genuinely trying to help. The fierce growls had given way to weary acceptance. And the tension in the air began to dissipate. Once the jaguar's wounds were all patched up, Ethan found himself unsure of the next steps. He knew he should probably leave it there and resume his daily duties. But his conscience wouldn't let him. In the back of his mind, he realized that he could easily lose his job if he wasn't careful. He was, in a way, fraternizing with the enemy by assisting the animal. However, he also recognized that this was the first time in weeks that he felt at peace with himself. So, he decided to return to the same spot the following day. Half expecting the jaguar to be waiting for him. He couldn't deny the excitement he felt the next afternoon when he discovered the big cat at the riverbank. With him, he brought a raw piece of meat. And he watched with fascination as the jaguar devoured it within seconds. Days turned into weeks as Ethan continued to care for the jaguar. He provided it with food and shelter, and gradually, a delicate bond of trust developed between them. The jaguar, whom Ethan named Cazador, which meant hunter in Spanish, appeared to recognize that this human was distinct from the others. As Ethan and Cazador forged an unlikely friendship, he couldn't help but question his own loyalties. He had been hired to safeguard the interests of a corporation seeking to exploit the Amazon for profit. Yet, his encounter with Cazador had awakened a profound sense of responsibility for the land and its inhabitants. As much as he understood that his job was a means to support his family, he found himself grappling with a growing commitment to the well-being of the jungle and its creatures. Ethan couldn't help but ponder the cost at which he wanted his children to grow up in a natural environment and cultivate respect for all wildlife. However, he grappled with how to instill this attitude in them while working for private corporations. For the time being, he continued with his job. Albeit with newfound companionship. Cazador followed him everywhere. Providing protection from other predators. Much like Ethan had protected him. It was a partnership born of mutual respect and the desire to safeguard one another. One day, as they ventured through the jungle together, Cazador stumbled upon something that would change everything. Deep within the rainforest, concealed beneath layers of vegetation, 
lay an ancient burial ground. An invaluable, sacred site of the indigenous people who had lived in harmony with the land for generations. Cazador had been contentedly walking beside Ethan when he suddenly halted and began to search the ground with his nose. Ultimately uncovering the burial site. This discovery further intensified Ethan's ethical dilemmas. What began as concerns for the well-being of animals like Cazador had evolved into a profound humanitarian debate that IT became evident to Ethan that his discovery was a pivotal moment. Proof that the land he had been tasked with defending held not only natural wonders but also a profound cultural heritage. The idea that sacred sites like these, which had existed for so long, were on the verge of being raised to make way for a factory, simply felt unjust in every sense. Ethan couldn't stand idly by and allow it to be desecrated any longer. That very day, he made a life-altering decision. He chose to change sides and do the right thing, leveraging his knowledge of the jungle. He discreetly informed environmentalists and indigenous activists about the sacred site. Together, they initiated a legal battle to protect the land from further development. While there had been many lawsuits over this land in the past, this was the first one grounded in claims of cultural heritage. All thanks to Cazador's discovery of the site. Ethan couldn't help but feel that the jaguar had entered his life for precisely this purpose. News of Ethan's transformation from a corporate enforcer to an advocate for the Amazon quickly spread garnering attention and support from various quarters. It was a tale that captured the world's imagination. A narrative of redemption. Where a man chose to align himself with nature rather than against it. Undoubtedly. His transition was met with considerable distaste and animosity. Many of his former colleagues ostracized him. Frequently subjecting him to threats and hostility. In their eyes. Ethan's change seemed like an assertion of superiority. But in reality, his sole aim was to protect the forest, which was enduring severe desecration for the profit-driven desires of the wealthy. Understandably, a movement like this was met with strong resistance from the private landowners. Now that they had more reasons to oppose it, they escalated their protests, at times resorting to violence. Ethan tried to distance himself from these protests. As his presence offered his former colleagues the perfect opportunity to target him. Nevertheless, as he continued aiding environmentalists and indigenous groups in their battle against corporate interests, he frequently encountered threats and danger. The private corporation he once worked for was resolute in maintaining its grip on the Amazon's resources and showed no hesitation in using force to achieve its objectives. In the midst of a particularly tense confrontation between protesters and the corporation's security forces, Ethan's loyalty was put to the test. He stood at the forefront, striving to de-escalate the situation peacefully. However, when violence erupted, he found himself making a split-second decision. Amidst the chaos, he chose to stand his ground, shielding the protesters from harm. This moment marked a pivotal juncture in Ethan's ongoing ethical struggle. In many ways, his actions on that day illustrated his unwavering dedication to the cause. His story evolved into an inspiration for those who had once perceived him as an adversary, showcasing the transformative power of choosing to stand on the right side of history. Ethan had undergone a profound transformation. Shifting from a hired enforcer to a protector of the Amazon that I end doing so. He had become a symbol of redemption and hope for people around the world. The battle to save the Amazon intensified with each passing day. Marked by protests, legal battles. And international pressure directed at the corporation seeking to exploit the rainforest. Ethan and Cazador continued their vigilant patrols. Ensuring the safety of the land and its inhabitants. The image of a man alongside a jaguar swiftly became emblematic of the struggle for safeguarded land in the region. Environmentalists, indigenous communities, scientists, and concerned citizens from all corners of the globe united in a collective effort to protect the Amazon. 
Ethan's personal journey served as a unifying force. Having experienced both sides of the conflict, his transformation inspired others to reevaluate their own roles and beliefs. Together, they formed a formidable force that could not be ignored. His efforts sparked a wildfire that proved challenging to extinguish. As the international press became aware of Ethan's work, they immediately sought to interview him and Cazador. Requests poured in from famous magazines and newspapers worldwide all eager to share this beautiful story of redemption. Naturally, he agreed, believing that there was no such thing as bad press. One magazine interview led to another and another, eventually resulting in an invitation to participate as a guest on a highly popular talk show. This opportunity placed the power to endorse and promote all the work they had put into saving the land in Ethan's hands, his story injected a fresh level of intrigue into the protest for people from all backgrounds. Instead of being a campaign confined to local interest, it garnered an international audience deeply concerned about the well-being of animals like Cazador. Before they knew it, their mission had reached a global stage. Donations began pouring in from various sources almost overwhelming Ethan and his efforts. It was a welcome but daunting influx of funds. And they weren't quite sure how to manage such an abundance. Ethan soon came to recognize that their success was all about leveraging public pressure. The most effective way to dissuade unscrupulous businessmen from engaging in harmful activities was to apply public scrutiny. By doing so, the public could weigh in and signal to companies whether or not their client base supported certain endeavors. Ethan understood this dynamic all too well, having been a client himself. In particular, he had a deep-seated issue with the company he used to work for. They had coerced him into conducting actions that ran contrary to his moral principles. He understood that these corporations often took advantage of individuals in situations like his causing them to accept jobs even if they conflicted with their ethical values. When Ethan made this connection, he realized precisely what needed to be done. What followed was nothing short of astonishing. He began using the money from his interviews with Cazador to support his neighbors. Some of them were former colleagues, while others worked in similar roles but for different companies. By providing them with financial assistance, those trapped in uncomfortable situations were given the freedom to quit their jobs. They could now choose employment aligned with their beliefs rather than compromising their principles for a paycheck. Ethan's inspired idea transformed the narrative. No longer were his former colleagues threatening him, instead. They rallied to his side, offering their support. Through their collective efforts, they successfully persuaded his former employer to withdraw from developing the land where Cazador and the sacred burial site had been discovered. This outcome was groundbreaking, considering the typical power wielded by development companies over such lands. For the first time, Ethan felt a profound sense of pride in what he was accomplishing. Knowing that he had played a vital role in catalyzing positive change, Ethan now had the peace of mind that he could return home and face his young children. Knowing that he was doing everything within his power to secure a future where animals could freely and happily roam in their natural habitat. As an added bonus, he knew that Cazador would never stumble upon barbed wire again and could explore the land without fearing man-made traps, the story of Ethan and Cazador evolved into a legend that spread across the world. Serving as a symbol of redemption transformation, and the enduring power of the human spirit to effect change. Thanks to his success in shutting down his former employer's development, he gained the confidence to expand and support other protest groups fighting similar battles. He utilized his popularity and Cazador's fame to draw attention, further channeling it for positive causes. For years, Ethan and the remarkable Jaguar continued this vital work. However, one day, Ethan awoke to find that Cazador was nowhere to be seen. Although devastated, he also understood that Cazador had always been a wild animal. Clearly, 
The big cat had deemed his home safe enough to return to, possibly forever. Ethan occasionally caught glimpses of Cazador when he ventured into the forest. Finding strength in the knowledge of Cazador's survival to continue his mission of protecting the land. He resolved never to back down for the sake of Cazador's future family and his own. The story is undeniably beautiful and inspiring, showcasing the remarkable bond between humans and nature. As for your questions. I'm just a text-based AI and don't possess feelings or personal opinions. However, it's heartwarming to see individuals like Ethan willing to take risks to protect wildlife and their natural habitats. And deforestation is a significant global issue that demands careful consideration and action to ensure a sustainable and balanced coexistence between humans and the environment. It's a matter of great concern for environmentalists and conservationists around the world. The staff of the Animal Rescue Center met a poor stray dog on the roadside. To their surprise, it kept yelling at a house. When the staff walked into the dog, the scene in front of him shocked him. What happened? Why does the dog keep yelling at the house? It is said that maternal love is the greatest feeling in the world, which bears all people's gratitude to their mothers. Motherly love is often difficult to describe in words and it is an emotion that we can't praise too much. Moreover, maternal love is not only related to human beings. It exists in every place in the world, regardless of race and boundaries, but also among all animals. Today we are going to tell the story about a great mother dog. On this day, the staff of the Animal Rescue Center found a stray dog with strange behavior nearby. It kept shouting at a house and looked very sad. The young worker approached the dog curiously. And at that moment, he saw the swollen breasts drooping under the poor stray dog. The staff was shocked. He was sure that the stray dog had just given birth to several puppies. It is reasonable for the dog to be with its own children, why did it run here alone? After that, the staff called the stray dog to his side. The dog noticed that the strange man in front of him was harmless, and immediately wagged his tail and ran over. The staff put a leash on the dog and called another companion to bring some food to the dog. It looked hungry. After eating the food, the dog looked up at the staff pitifully, and his eyes were full of pleading and sadness. The staff squatted down to find out what had happened. The dog took the leash and took two steps forward. Then looked back at the staff and motioned him to follow himself. The dog took the rescuer to the outside of the house where he had been standing. His child was inside at this time. But he couldn't get in at all. Which made the dog very disappointed. The staff knocked on the owner's door. And after learning that the poor dog gave birth to his child, his owner immediately kicked him out of the house because they no longer needed the old and emaciated dog. But the mother dog is very sad. She hasn't seen her babies carefully and hasn't fed them. She is very worried about whether her babies will be hungry. So she has been barking outside the house and wants to go in and find her babies. The staff looked at the mother dog in front of them. I wanted it to reunite with my children. However, the owner of the dog refused to give the dog to them. There was no way out. The staff had to take the dog mother back to their rescue center first. They carried the dog mother to the car, but the dog mother's eyes never moved away from the house until the car drove away. And she kept staring at the direction of the house. After settling in, the staff returned to the dog's owner's home with a representative of an animal rights expert. After communication, they finally brought the puppies back to the rescue center. The puppies are helpless in the pet box. Not knowing where they are going. Mother dog is very worried at the rescue center. It walked back and forth in the cage. Suddenly, it heard the footsteps of human beings. The staff came in with its children in their arms. The mother dog pulled the fence excitedly. She finally saw the children she thought about day and night. 
the mother dog took her children into her arms and began to nurse them. At this moment. She had been waiting for too long. After the children fell asleep. The mother dog stood up and walked to the staff. She looked at the human beings in front of her gratefully. Without them. She might never see her children. The staff touched the dog's head. Fortunately, the ending of the story was beautiful. After that, the dog lived with her children at ease. From the dog mother. We can see the brilliance and greatness of motherhood. It is always worried about the feelings paid by its children. Which makes people feel deeply and moved. The maternal brilliance emanating from that small body is also dazzling. In fact, dogs are not only very loving to their children, but also full of maternal love to human babies. Just like dogs in the following stories. The young couple are about to welcome new members of their family. A cute baby. But one thing makes them very worried. They have a very cute dog. After having a baby, two people will inevitably put more energy into the baby. They are worried that the dog will be sad because of this. In fact, the worries of husband and wife are unnecessary. A few weeks later, the wife gave birth to a healthy girl. They named her Selena. When the wife and husband came home with Selena in their arms, the dog ran over excitedly. The wife asked her husband to hold the dog and then put Selena close to it. The dog fell in love with this cute baby at first sight. She was so cute and cute. Since then, the dog has been by Selena's side all day. It even began to sleep next to Selena's crib, and was always alert to the baby's surroundings. Their relationship became very close. Whenever Selena wakes up, no matter what the dog is doing, it will run to the crib very nervously. It is worried about what will happen to the baby. The couple are very moved when they look at the dog's nervous appearance. Their dog loves Selena as much as they do. However, they don't want their dog to be so tired every day. Because every time Selena eats, the dog will lie on the sofa and yawn. The couple keep assuring the dog that everything is fine. But this can't stop him from being vigilant. They feel helpless. So they try to move the dog's nest to another room. However, the dog is not interested in other places. Every night. He still sleeps under Selena's crib and watches her dutifully. That day, Selena suddenly began to cry. And the sleeping dog immediately opened its eyes. And then ran nervously to the side of Selena's crib. It was still on high alert and sniffed around the crib. Because the bumper of the crib is too high. Blocking the dog's view. It can't see whether the baby is safe or not. 